Broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council Meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin, Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council Meetings, City Committee Meetings, Meeting Agendas, and other documents via the City website, www.ninagov.org. NENA residents can express their opinions about city issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website, www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback. I will call to uh, order the MENA Common Council for Wednesday, December 19th, 2018. Welcome everyone here. First item of business will be the roll call. Please sign in as your name is called and answer the clerk. Thank you. Lerman Boyette. Here. Bates. Here. Hillstrom. Here. Lendrum? Here. Erickson? Here. Lang? Here. Steele? Here. Coons? Here. And Stevenson? Here. Not Edward. Okay. <laughs> I signed you in. That's all right. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, all members are present. There's a quorum present. Next item of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance, and that will be led by Mayor. All right. Item number three is approval of the council proceedings of December fifth, two thousand eighteen's regular session. And the Committee of the Whole workshop sessions on October 30th, November 1st, November 5th, November 7th, 2018. Those can be found on the city website. Is there a motion? Move to approve. There's a motion by Alderman Bates. Carrie Landrum. Second. <laughs> okay. Uh, motion by Alderman Landrum. Seconded by. Okay. Who wants second? Oops. Alderman Lang. There we go. We got her. Is there any discussion, correction, addition, or comment? <coughs> All in favor aye. will vote aye. All opposed will vote no using the roll call machine, please. Members are voting aye. That's so ordered unanimous. Item number four is a public hearing. Tonight we have a public hearing to consider amending the official street map of the city of Nina, established in section 26 230 of the municipal code, removing the road between the eastern terminus of Southfield Way and South Commercial Street. For the others of you, for, uh, it's uh, off of Bruce Street. Uh, there in commercial, the commercial. There was a road that was uh, officially mapped, uh, and we are taking action or possible tonight to remove that road. Uh, there was a public hearing in the planning commission. You'll hear about that later. At this point, I will open the public hearing on <coughs> amending the official street map. Is there anyone here who would like to talk to the council on that public hearing? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing on that. Move on to item number five, which is their plan commission report that pertains to the public hearing. Plan commission meeting of December 11, 2018. Alderman Lang. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting on that meeting from December 11th, the minutes can be found on the city website. Just one item, the commission recommends council adopt ordinance number 2018-19, the official street map amendment, removing officially mapped road between the eastern terminus of Southfield Way 
and South Commercial Street, and I would so move. Second. Alderman Lang moves that the council adopt ordinance number 2018-19. Seconded by Alderman Erickson. Discussion? Anyone? Brad, you want to give us one minute uh, what we're doing here? Folks, no? Last June, uh, Council actually approved the preliminary plat for Southfield First Edition. Um, when we met with the developer and, and looking through this, uh, we realized that with the, the map street as it was, that you, you really couldn't get any lots on the south side of the street that had any significant depth, uh, which would have been a challenge to, to place any house on it. So the exception to having the street go through, we did approve a, a cul-de-sac, which would get five lots in this subdivision. Um, one of the property owners who is along South Commercial Street where this road would have went through was uh, agreed with the, um, the cul-de-sac as opposed to the street going through because it would have essentially went through his property. Thank you. Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. I was wondering, uh, during the um, evaluation of this, that area has very bad drainage. Are we going to be able to handle that? I mean, um, I think uh, Director Kaiser knows that that area specifically has basements flooding all the time because of the, <coughs> the water table being high or the basements being low there, one or the other. Is it, are we still going to be able to get enough water out of that area to... Uh, even though it's not a full street, because sometimes terminuses have not as good drainage. I wouldn't say that uh, development along this Southfield Court or whatever it will be called um, <clears throat> will really impact the drainage issues overall in that area. Um, much of what we're dealing with down there is high rock, and that, that's causing uh, a number of our issues with residents on Ashbrook Place particularly. Um, when we have high groundwater, um, you know, springtime, those, uh, those residents have some pumps that are working overtime and occasionally can't keep up. Now, now when we put a cul-de-sac in there, has that sewage, or not sewage, but uh, storm sewer been attached yet? Is it, is it in there and not attached, or? I would have to, I don't believe the storm sewer was extended to the full length of the cul-de-sac. I think it was just stubbed off of Bruce okay. Street when that uh, first part of Southfield Platt was built. So that might help at least for the groundwater that's sitting on top of the, their lawns. Yeah, I mean, ultimately that was intended to go to the little pond that's on the corner on the north side of Southfield Court. Um, and that would be our intent when that plat, the new plat is built. And this all is part of that... Um, network that eventually goes to the um, retention pond over by the industrial park? Is that? Yes, that's correct. That goes to the Commerce Court Pond. Great, thank you. Thank you for your question. Anything else? All right, there's a motion and a second by Alderman Lang. All in favor of the motion to adopt ordinance number 2018 19, vote aye. All opposed, vote no using the roll call machine, please. That motion passes nine to zero. Item number six is the public forum. Uh, we uh, invite members uh, of the community or anyone, residents, to come and speak to the council on any topic that they so desire. All we ask is yeah, give your name and your address uh, so we have it for the record. And we limit your comments to under five minutes. Is there anyone here who would like to address the council? Welcome. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Go to the microphone, will you please, Dwight? Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, good evening, Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of council. Um, some of you heard me at the uh, Parks and Recreation. You'll have to bear with me for one more time. Um, I recently put a post on Facebook regarding dog refuse waste, and it received a stunning amount of comments in the short amount of time that it was near the top. Uh, another lady also made a, co a <coughs> Facebook post, and I went back and looked at those two posts over the period of time that they were at the last meeting, and there was only one other post on the Nina.admin <coughs> page that has more posts than this particular post regarding dog waste. And that person was complaining about her spectrum bill. Uh, I posted a picture on 
of a dog waste that was dropped in the middle of the sidewalk. Uh, I have, since the trail was run through there, I have got three instances, all within 150 feet of my house. There is another lady, I believe her name is Kathy Stahl, on that site. I believe her son or grandson is an Eagle Scout, and he has a project for his scouts that has a fishing line receptacle for waste fishing line on the south trestle on the southwest corner. <clears throat> uh, she posted on there that people are using that particular container for dog poo disposal. It goes to show me that if we have those containers out, people will use them. Uh, it can't be very healthy to have them, people laying them wherever. If you read the post, if you go onto that Facebook page and read the post, I believe you will be surprised at what people are doing with their dog waste and where it's found all over the city. Uh, I'm hoping that we can uh, do something with this issue sometime here in the future. That's all I have. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you, Dwight. Anyone else like to address council on any topic during the public forum? Anyone else? All right, seeing no one else, uh, I will close the public forum. Any, is there any comments about the public forum? I, I, I will just say this. I have had discussions uh, with Director Kading on these uh, receptacles that I see in some communities and cities, um, and have asked him about the possibility of trying a couple of them around the city, around the parks area, um, see what happens. I will tell you that Park and Rec people don't like it because they got to empty them. So someone's got to empty them. You got to empty them in a timely manner too, because you know during the summer. <clears throat> but they're, you know, that they're good. They, they they have a plastic bag. They have to be filled. So you know it's it's maintenance. It's someone's got to take care of it. So they are considering it. Mike said he'll consider it for this spring, uh, summer to try it in a couple locations to see uh, how it works out, but nothing's been settled at this point, okay? Alderman Bates? I'm just wondering if something like that and someone who has to empty them, the cost of something like that could be incorporated into like dog licenses? I mean, just a thought. If every dog got licensed, we wouldn't have a problem. Well, that would be the perfect solution too. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, good thought. Okay, thank you for that thought. I Yeah, it's, uh, and, and I, when we get Later, I'm going to mention dog licenses, so thanks for reminding me that. Um, anyone else? All right. Number eight is a consent agenda. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Move to approve. Alderman Lundra moves. Second. Seconded by Alderman Bates. Are there any questions on the consent agenda, comments? Seeing none, all in favor, vote aye. All opposed, vote no. Using the roll call machine, please. That motion passes 9 to 0. Item number 9 is the reports of standing committees. Regular Public Services and Safety Committee meeting of December 11, 2018. Chairman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. Minutes can be found on the city website. Committee recommends council approve the purchase of an Accuracy International 308 win. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Bolt action rifle to replace the JP Enterprises rifle for an estimated cost of $4,000 with funds from the police department 2018 capital outlay budget and that the department be allowed to keep the JP Enterprises AR-10 that they currently have. And I would so move. Alderman Bates Second. moves. Second. Seconded by Alderman Hillstrom. Any comments or questions? Alderman Boyette. I have a couple questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, um, why are we replacing it if we're keeping it? <laughs> so that means it works. So I'm just curious. We have several different weapons at the police department. Uh, the sniper rifle has to be the most accurate. 
Um, if you think about shooting a penny from 400 yards, we have to be able to hit the penny. Now with a AR rifle, now you expand that to like a bowling ball. This sniper rifle that we currently have, you can't hit a penny with it, it's not uh, stable. So it's bigger like a softball size. So if you have to take a hostage shot, God forbid, you can't use that rifle. But it's still good enough for patrol use if we have to shoot, if there's an incident and you have to shoot somebody center mass, then it's good because it is a good rifle. And that aspect is just not good enough to be a sniper rifle. And when did we buy that gun? Uh, I think it was five or six years ago. So it's it's been around. It's not like a year or two old. It's it's been used. Correct. Okay. Okay. But still good enough for patrol use, just not good enough for sniper use. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Hey, thank you for your question, Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. We did discuss in committee of the uh, possibility of going back after the company, and apparently their um, processes <coughs> have changed from going from handmade rifles to to uh, machine factory type automatically made rifles, and um, the other police forces who might have found the same problem with theirs. Uh, there's no way to go after them and you know demand your money back. But the fact that you can use it for another close purpose is at least some of the money coming back. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or questions? All right. All in favor of uh, that purchase of, a, of that rifle to replace the uh, sniper rifle will vote aye. All opposed will vote no using the roll call machine. That motion passes nine to zero. Committee recommends council authorize the appropriate city officers to sign the intermunicipal agreement for the Courtney Court reconstruction project, and I would so move. Alderman Bates moves. Second. Seconded by Alderman Hillstrom. Any comments or questions? Alderman Coons. Can't click on there. Um, yeah, I, I have a, a few questions. Uh, I, so this is a, a town road. Um, I'm get the layout there. We're putting in all new sanitary and um, water. First of all, I'm assuming that the water is only going to the seven city homes and not the other 22 town homes. Is that correct? Uh, to improve their uh, system, the water utility is extending... Right now it dead ends kind of right in that uh, southeast elbow in the court. They're going to extend it to Green Bay Road. This allows a better circulation of their uh, their water in that area. <coughs> but only to, ex only to existing city municipalities? Only property. existing city properties will connect into <coughs> it. That's correct. And then the sanitary sewer, my guess is, and I'm guessing here, we put this in that... None, none of the town people are paying us, but the, but, the, but the town itself is, and they're getting charged to the town, and the town's... The sanitary sewer already exists in the road. Yep. We're replacing what's out there because we're the owners of it. Yep. Uh, the town residents uh, pay a flat fee as utility customers. Uh, since they don't have water, they don't have a water meter to use, so they pay the flat rate <coughs> charge to the water utility to be utility customers. <clears throat> so they pay direct, we bill them directly and they, drill, they pay directly to us. That's correct. All right. And so from an I and I st standpoint, do we, do we do anything for this? I thought at some point we had like flow meters somewhere and we were, we were um, billing town people by, the, by these flow regulators and something along those lines, but that, that's not the case? Um, not, not in this particular case. You may be thinking of, uh, maybe the, uh, the Cummings Lane, uh, yeah. situation where that, that lift station is metered. So we charge the town based on that lift station metering, but we don't have individuals or a group meter covering the town residents in this area. 
And then I assume, too, that this is a deferred assessment. So if any of these um, properties want to do it, annex uh, into the city, they would then have some um, cost. I assume they have one right now. It's probably a, it's probably a, this is probably an assessment on top of assessment, is my guess almost. I would say that if any would choose to annex, uh, the deferred assessment would relate to the water installation, the water main. And not the sanitary sewer. And not sanitary sewer. Because they're current customers current. and they have an existing system. Okay. I'm just, it, it, and it's a difficult situation. It's un yes. unfortunate yes. where we have these slices of town in the middle of the city and we have situations like this. I did. I thank you for the time. Sure. I will add this: if there's a town resident that needs water, believes that city water may be beneficial to them, now may be the time for them to consider that because it'd be cheaper to hook up now while we were in there doing work than later. That's as far as I'll say right. Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. Did you get a chance to talk with the town official? You were mentioning you might just give him a call. There's been discussion. Okay. I'm glad you contacted him. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Good. Um, anyone else? All in favor of the municipal intermunicipal Intermunicipal agreement for the Courtney Court reconstruction project. Vote aye. I'll oppose. Vote no. Using the roll call machine, please. That motion passes nine to zero. Committee recommends council approve a distribution easement, um, underground distribution easement for We Energy's work request four one zero three nine two two. And I would so move. Alderman Bates moves. Second. Seconded by Alderman Stevenson. Any discussion on this item? All in favor will vote aye. All opposed will vote no using the roll call machine, please. That motion passes 9 to 0. Committee recommends council accept the intersection traffic control plan as presented, instruct staff to implement changes per the plan, and report changes to council for final approval, and I would so move. Alderman Bates moves. Second. Second. Seconded by Alderman Lendrum. Any discussion on this item? I will just uh, go ahead, Alderman Coons, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, I saw some notes, but I'm, I'm curious at, at the meeting, um, there was a discussion about <clears throat> we put this through and then there's final approval that comes through uh, the council. And it sounded like, when, and maybe I was reading between the lines, that, uh, that we, we could <laughs> make determinations or that we might make determinations based on um, things that weren't laid out, things that weren't prescribed, which, which is the whole reason for do this in the first place. So I'm a little concerned, and I don't know, maybe you guys addressed it, but the idea that we're going through this whole, this whole, um, this whole plan to be more consistent in how we handle things, and yet it seems um, that we might have a, give ourselves a little loophole to make, you know, any changes deemed uh, desirable, which always seems to get us in trouble. And I, I don't know if that was discussion, at the meeting, or I'm just looking for trouble that isn't there. I don't know. All the person Bates. Thank you. Um, yes, we discussed it at um, what we kind of came up with. If you'll all agree, is we have a framework. We have uh, built-in exceptions because of you know uh, dot angles of seeing and things like that. That they will before they do their recommendation. They will check it out physically to see if, that, if any of these exceptions hold true. And then the last one was kind of what you were talking about, just having some kind of human um, override. Um, we already put a couple in just by saying if it's up against a park or a school, even though it looks fine to you, we'd feel more comfortable with really checking those out. Um, I thought he said that the exceptions 
would be kind of under his purvey and um, uh, he didn't expect a lot of them. I mean, other than the fact that he's going to get a lot of requests saying, put it back, put it back, um, to to actually say this is warranted to put it back <coughs> or to change it higher. Uh, he didn't expect a lot of those. But we knew that we, as council members and the mayor, will be getting calls about this. And we also understood that People will have to be educated. We talked about the mayor putting things in the newsletter about changes are coming through. If you don't understand how to get to get through a T-shaped intersection where you're the one coming in, this is how you do it because that's where we're getting a lot of people um, expecting to see a yield sign where there's not one necessary. And if I could just follow up, uh, the, the, the idea that when areas that are close to schools, are, are we changing the the code or the ordinance or the policy, whatever this is, to reflect that. I mean, I think those are all great things, and I have no problem supporting this if we stick to a plan. Um, and that's why I just I look at that. If we have things documented and done, it's much easier for at least from my perspective to, if someone's saying, well, why are you doing this? We're doing this across the board and not, we do it some of the time, but unless you really complain, then we change it. Um, so. I don't know if did we change that. Did we, we updated that to meet those changes. Well, the uh, the memo that uh, traffic engineer Merton provided on the revised policy did indicate that um, proximity to a school or park was a warrant for an intersection control. Thank you. Any other questions? Not all in favor. <clears throat> all in favor of uh, the motion will vote aye. All opposed will vote no using the roll call machine. That motion passes eight to one. And that concludes my report. Thank you for your report. Um, item number B is the regular finance and personnel committee meeting on December 10th. Chairman Erickson. Thank you, Mayor. We have a oh, I'm special. Sorry, the special, one. the special meeting. I'm sorry, <clears throat> before we do that, we want to do the special meeting. Jim just handed that to me. I'm sorry. Uh, special Finance and Personnel Committee meeting of December 19, 2018. I have my old agenda here. The Council consideration of the 2019 budget levy limit resolution, levy limit carry forward and fire and rescue exemption, resolution number 2018-28, Chairperson Erickson. Yes, um, I move that we approve the 2019 budget, budget levy limit resolution, levy limit carry forward and fire rescue exemption resolution 2018-28, and I so move. Okay, thank you. Alderman Erickson moves. Is there a second? <coughs> Alderman Erickson, press your button, please. There you go. Thank you. Second. Alderman Erickson moves. Alderman Stevenson seconds it. <clears throat> Any comments, questions? Would like an explanation? Um, for the. Go ahead, Alderman Erickson. For the rest, for the rest of the council, I'd like Director Esker just to explain sure. this. Sure. And again, uh, as the memo indicated, uh, this is just some housekeeping that needed to be done um, for. Uh, uh, for, uh, per state law, uh, resolutions uh, need to be passed um, it, when uh, at a time in which the city would choose to uh, use um, the uh, levy limit exemption for fire rescue, joint fire rescue departments, and for the levy limit carry forward uh, that was uh, inadvertently not included as part of the November 13th. Uh, budget hearing and adoption. So we're, as I said, we're just doing a little housekeeping to have that resolution passed to uh, um, ensure that uh, that that passes through the uh, 
uh, requirements of state law. So this is a necessary step to state. Correct. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion for the 2019 budget levy limit resolution, resolution number 2018-28, will vote aye. All opposed will vote no. That motion passes 9 to 0. Now we go on to the regular Finance Personnel Committee meeting. Chairperson Erickson. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting out from the meeting of December 10th, 2018. The minutes can be found on the city website. Item number one, the committee recommends council approve the 2019 salary plan as follows. A, January 1st cost of living adjustment of 1% for all non-union employees covered by the salary plan. This excludes employees on the step plan. B, April exemplary performance awards, 5% of pay not added to base for a small group of employees. C, July 1st merit increase with an average increase of 1.25% excludes employees on step plan. And D, the October midpoint adjustments with an average increase of 1% for employees below midpoint and not on the step plan. And I so move. Alderman Erickson moves. Alderman Stevenson seconds. Second. To approve the 2019 salary plan as outlined. <clears throat> Alderman Stevenson. Yeah, I, th I think just to clarify before somebody out there in the TV <laughs> land blows a gasket, the um, item B is a um, one half percent of pay, not 5%. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. 0.5%. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Alderman Bates. That's what I was going to say. All right. Thank you. Everybody's button was going off. <laughs> Thanks for Bottom the Bottom line is we are very, uh, we're, we're in line probably even a little <laughs> lower than some of our neighboring communities, some of the neighboring uh, area communities in the area uh, with regards to this. But uh, this is the 2019 salary plan it has went through committee and a lot of hard work's been put into it. And we believe that uh, we need to treat our employees uh, well um, if they deserve these types of uh, increases. Uh, there's a merit type of uh, plan attached to it. So Alderman Bates. No, that's what I said I had. Okay. That was the question. All right. Oh, anyone else like to discuss this? If not, there is a motion and a second. All in favor will vote aye. All opposed will vote no using the roll call machine. <clears throat> that motion passes nine to zero. Item number two, the committee recommends council authorize the sale of public land to Wisconsin Electric Power Company for $1 to be used by We Energies to bury wires west of their proposed new electric substation at 181 Northwestern Avenue, and I so move. There's a motion by Alderman Erickson, seconded by Second. Alderman Lang. All, um, anyone uh, have any comments or questions? Also went through committee. Uh, this is some excess land that's adjacent to land that Wisconsin Electric owns. Uh, is there any comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor, vote aye. All opposed, vote no. Using the roll call <clears throat> machine, please. That motion passes 9 to 0. Item number 3, the committee recommends council approve and accept the petition for annexation of 7.5 acres located along Wooden Shoe Road <coughs> in the town of Vinland. And I so move. This will be considered uh, following the report of the plan. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And for that your... concludes my report. Thank you very much for your report. Item number 10 is the report of special committees uh, in liaisons, special project committees. <clears throat> Regular plan commission meeting of December 11, 2018. Uh, Representative uh, Lang. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the minutes can be found on the city's website. Item number one, commission recommends council adopt ordinance number 2018-18, annexation number 210, Wooden Shoe Road, Town of Vinland, 
and designate the property as R1 single family residence district zoning classification and I would so move. Second. Moved by Alderman Lane, seconded by <coughs> Alderman Coons. This is uh, the recommendation of the Plan Commission, Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. Just to clarify, we were looking at some of these paperwork that was left on our desk, and this is not this is not the one for tonight. The one we're is talking tonight. Uh, this is the one that's um, up by Liberty Heights, correct? Yes. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? This is, uh, we're, you know, I will just say, state this. We have, Dr. Hayes, I believe we have 20 buildable lots in the city of Nina. Is that correct? Probably less than that now. but Less than that. So this is our first annexation since 2000 and. Yes, something. <laughs> Too far to remember. I'll go to Brad. 2008, Brad, or? Yeah, okay, that's what I'm trying to use. So th th this is the first significant residential development that's an annexation. It's in the town of Vinland. Uh, we have crossed uh, uh, Wooden Shoe Road now for the first time, so we're excited. We're going to have some buildable lots in the city of Nina, some lots that people that want to, you know, live here, move their business here, uh, come and work for companies here are going to be able to have some lots available um, in, in in the city of Nina to build on and won't have to go elsewhere. So this is kind of a big deal. So I'm excited about it. Any other comments or questions? If not, ordinance number 2018-18, annexation number 210, Wooden Shoe Road. All in favor, vote aye. All opposed, vote no using the roll call machine. That motion passes nine to zero. Item number two, commission recommends council authorize the sale of the city owned land west of 181 Northwestern Avenue as excess public property and I would so move. Alderman Lane. Second. Moves, seconded by Alderman Erickson. Any discussion? Can we do this? Yeah, didn't we do this? I just asked Jim that, but yeah, go I'm ahead. The statute requires that the plan commission uh, motion be uh, read into it. The commission is uh, by statute it must uh, report to the council what its uh, recommendation is on selling the land. Well, in essence, in essence, this this action confirms the the one uh, recommendation from the plan commission on based on yeah. action the council has already taken. Right. Well, the 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 commission uh, confirms that uh, this is excess land. And the finance committee authorized the sale of the land. Okay. And answer the question, Alderman Bates? I guess, do we have to do this one? Or should that have been a report earlier and then we just voted There's on it? There's actually two separate actions two separate that are going actions. on. One is to approve the sale of the land. Right. The second is to de declare it as an excess land. And whether it comes first or second is really simultaneous. They mean. Well, I guess in my book, I would have said it's excess sand, land. We're going to sell it to you is kind of what I would have said. Because once yeah. we sold it to you, it's obviously excess land. Well, the, the, the sale hasn't been consummated. Okay. It's, it's appropriate to report it. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> um, thank you for the explanation. All in favor, vote aye. All opposed, vote no using the roll call machine. That motion passes nine to zero. Includes my report. Thank you very much for your report. Item B is the Board of Public Works meeting of December 11th. Vice Chairperson Hillstrom. Thank you, Mayor. The minutes from this meeting can be found on the city website. Uh, there are two items on the agenda this evening, one in informational and one council action item. First one is informational. The board approves past but number two for contract 5-18, concrete pavement and sidewalk repair to Fisher Ullman Construction, 915 South Mid Park Drive, Appleton, Wisconsin, 54915, uh, for $81,035.80. The second item is a council action item. The board recommends council approve the final payment for contract 7 18 hot mix asphalt pavement repair to Northeast Asphalt Incorporated 
West 6380 Design Drive, Greenville, Wisconsin for $100,798.75, and I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Hillstrom. Second. Seconded by Alderman Bates. Final payment for contract 7-18. Mm -hmm. Discussion, Alderman Coons. Thank you, Mayor. What is this? <laughs> uh, the repair, is this the, the miscellaneous kind of thing? Yes, this is the mis miscellaneous asphalt repair. And so is this like patching holes or is this doing chunks of asphalt? For the, it's uh, chunks of asphalt. For the most part, it's uh, um, repairing utility cuts in the roads. Uh, that have been made by outside contractors. I know we had a large patch um, related to some uh, storm sewer relay work out in the 100 block of West Wisconsin. So it, it's more sizable chunks of asphalt. Not to muddy the waters, but it, I mean, I w if utilities had, I assume it's like they dug up stuff and then they kind of kind of the half patch over there and we finally go over and make it right. I, I would assume they do that or they're responsible for the cost of that. Uh, they're responsible for the initial patch. And part of the fee that they pay to us, the street excavation permit fee, covers the cost of doing a final patch. So there's offsetting revenue That's correct. for this. Okay, thank you. Good question. Because they're out there. Utilities, they've been out there a lot. Um, so there's a motion and a second to mm -hmm. approve the final payment of contract 7-18 for payment repair. All in favor of that motion, signify by, uh, we'll vote aye. All opposed will vote no using the roll call machine. That motion passes 9 to 0. That concludes my report, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, is there any update from the CDA, Director Hayes? A couple <coughs> things. The uh, CDA, in cooperation with Public Works, we did close on the Nina Foundry site, uh, completed the phase one. We did phase two work. Last week, um, we're waiting for the final report on that. We did identify one area near Danke's Dairy. If anyone's old enough to remember it, I'm not. Um, it's on Union Street. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> so so, so um, an area of petroleum there that we're going to have to deal with, uh, but we're still in the process of getting our hands around that. Uh, doesn't sound like good news, but actually probably is pretty good news considering the site was bordered on essentially four, three of the four corners by uh, locations that could have underground storage tanks. Um, hopefully we won't find anything else that will be too problematic, so we'll continue to work on that. Um, then Nina, F excuse me, the uh, Lawrence Salvage Yard in the Industrial Park, we are continuing. We have the phase one site work done, <laughs> waiting to get the final report on that project. The annexation petition will be on your desk and will be acted on later in the meeting or at least referred to committee. Um, so we're continuing to move forward on that with an anticipated closing date sometime prior to the end of March. Uh, we are, CDA is also working on a couple projects downtown, but uh, those are in the early stages, and uh, we're hopeful those will move forward and we'll have something more firm uh, for the council to consider in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Coons. Thank you, uh, just a question for Director Hayes. And that, with, the, with the Phase 2, we have a rough idea when we would get back the results of that? Um, information? Uh, assume probably within the next week or two. Okay. Um, they did groundwater uh, monitoring wells and they took samples from that earlier this week. Um, so it takes a little while to get that all through the labs. Is, is, that, the, is that the extent of phase two work then? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, That's I, the extent of phase. It, it is, well. I thought it was such a much longer, bigger <clears throat> thing. No, the phase two, it can be if we identify something and we need to do additional sampling. As an example, when we did the, when we took the initial samples or initial cores and identified the, um, the petroleum, Jerry and I discussed extending the sampling while we still had to drill around site to determine the extent of the contamination. So it can be something that you come back for if you have enough in the information to indicate that you need to do a little more testing. But for the most part, that should be it. Then it becomes, then it moves from, from a, a assessment process to a remediation process and how do you plan to deal with anything that you may have found on the site. But based on what you've found so far, I know there's more to it. I mean, if, if, if everything comes back 
good, um, we'd be able to move forward and, and use this for its intended purpose of... Yeah, we don't, we don't see any reason that we're not going to go forward. The, as an example, this petroleum is <clears throat> an area that would have to been, have been excavated regardless for the pond. Now it's a matter of, unfortunately, you could have used the fill material in Arrowhead. This material will probably have to go to a landfill. So, so good news all around. So, I mean, it's, just... it's not bad news. Okay. It's not great <laughs> news, but it's not bad news. Thank you. Alderman Lindrum. Thank you, Mary. I just want to remind Director Hayes about the family, the Voigt family, next to the dairy in the old days that um, buried many dogs in the yard. And not only did they bury their own dogs, several of their own family dogs, apparently they invited the neighbors to use that area to bury their dog. So during your digging, if you find an alarming amount of bones, you can, the, some of the Voight family is still around. You can ask them about okay. that. Yeah. I, I know cemeteries are protected. I'm not sure about pet cemeteries. Yeah. But Don't know. Um, <laughs> point well taken. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Never knew that. Okay. Um, Thank you for the update. Mm -hmm. Item number D is the library board. Report from the library board, Alderman Erickson. Thank you, Mayor. The Nina Library Board met today at 4 o'clock, and I have some exciting news to relay. Um, based on 2017 statistics, the Nina Public Library is now ranked the seventh highest circulating library in Wisconsin. And that is amazing when you consider the libraries um, that are of uh, Ahead of us are Madison, Milwaukee, Brown County, Waukesha, Appleton, and Kenosha. That being said, um, Nina has the 18th largest service population, and yet we are the seventh um, uh, highest circulating library. And we are the 37th <clears throat> in the largest municipality, local government, with a library in ranking. So kudos to the Nina Public Library. That is great news. Um, another interesting thing that I would like to point out is the Nina Public Library purchased two light therapy lamps, um, and these are available to use at the library, and they are artificial sun lamps that treat seasonal light disorder. So if you are in January or February and you need to have some light, you can check them out at the reference desk and see if that helps. So um, I encourage you to visit the Nina Public Library uh, website for all great, all of the great programming that's available. Um, so, and that concludes my report. Okay, thank you very much. The Nina Arts Council report, also Alderman Erickson. Thank you, Mayor. The Nina Arts Council had a very successful Celebrate the Season event on Saturday, December 8th. Um, there were events around town, the YMCA, the um, Nina Historical Society, Octagon House, the City Hall, uh, the Bergstrom Island Museum, the Nina Library, and um, the Academy of Arts at the Reserve. All of the <coughs> events were very successful, including the horse-drawn wagon rides, and I'd like to thank the mayor and uh, the city of Nina for sponsoring those. So, and that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, item number is 11 is uh, pre presentation of petitions. I understand we have two peti petitions. Yes. The clerk will read the topic of the petition. Okay, the first one I have is for direct annexation pursuant to 66.0217, print 2, Wisconsin statutes. Um, this is for Richard and Sue Larson, their uh, residential address of 166 Villa Drive in Nina. Um, but it's for property off of Bayview, um, between Bayview and Sunshine Lane, parcel ID 01004201. Is that uh, need a motion? To be heard? I move to uh, refer the annexation petition to the Finance Committee. And the uh, assuming the to the normal um, review by department heads to the appropriateness of the annexation, and then for ultimate council action. Second, and planning commission, and planning commission as well. Second, 
The motion by Alderman Stevenson, second by Alderman Boyette, to refer these to the to the proper two committees. We want that in the system. We want it in the system. We want to do both of these together, or are we going to do them separate? Separate annexations, separate motions. We'll do them separate. Well, okay. You want, you want to do in the system? The first I can. Yeah, I can. You I can, can, can punch in your motion and do the second. Yeah, you have to back up, I think, because we're voting. I'll make, I'll make the motion. Alderman Stevenson moved. And Boyette seconds. There we go. Those will be referred to the two appropriate committees. Any discussion on them? Seeing none. All in favor? Vote aye. All opposed? Vote. That motion passes 9 to 0. And the second petition. Okay, this one is for Lauren Rangeloff at 3000 Oregon Street in Oshkosh, uh, the owner of the property. Uh, this was for parcel number, let's see it on here. Uh, it's formerly Lauren Salvage Yard. I just received this one a little bit ago, so I'm just going to have the information on there. Chris, do you have the? For Lauren Salvage Yard. Yeah. Make a motion to refer this annexation request to both Plan Commission and Finance Committee. Second. All right. Alderman Stevenson moved, seconded by Alderman Boyette, to refer this petition. Not Boyette. Bates. Oh, I'm sorry. Alderman Bates. The, uh, petition for direct annexation uh, pursuant to. Uh, Section the uh, section sixty six point oh two one seven print two the Wisconsin statutes to the two standing committees to the two committees of jurisdiction finance and planning. Are there any comments or discussion? All in favor, vote aye. Oppose, vote no. Using the roll call machine. That motion passes nine to zero. Those are the two petitions, I believe. Correct. Yes. All right. Now, there are any council directives anyone would like to discuss? Is there any unfinished business? Unfinished business? Um, being, oh, any unfinished business? Alderman Stevenson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think it's appropriate time. I just want to publicly thank uh, the... Um, Emanesh Fire Rescue Local 275 for sponsoring and running the uh, Santa Float through the two communities over the last two weekends. I had a great pleasure of being involved one evening and just to see the the um, enthusiasm and, and uh, energy that uh, these not only kids but my families have um, <laughs> is amazing. Um, and it's uh, truly a great gift to the community. So and it's it is ran completely without any tax dollars supporting that. Uh, that's that's to the credit of our local two seventy five. And also want to acknowledge the, the donation and contribution of Bruce Levenhagen for once again. I think it's year twenty plus of sponsoring the um, the field to run not only the the trailer and uh, but also the support vehicles. So uh, kudos to everybody involved. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, and uh, I, I believe Todd, they're, they're looking at raising additional funds to for the trailer. Replace the trailer. So yeah, there's a, there's an effort already underway. So I'm sure there'll be more coming out relatively quickly. If people would like to donate um, to a good cause um, for that, uh, so they can upgrade their trailer and that, that would be really great. I, I do want to say that. Uh, um, Along with the same thing Todd said, thank you to everyone involved in that. To read the social media, the online stuff about the Santa float and people who don't live in the area. There was a comment from someone who lived in, lives now in Phoenix, and she said, I remember it vividly as, you know, to this day, that Santa float coming down. So it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's, it's pretty cool. And, and I know... Uh, one person took part. Our council president got to be uh, take part in it. Um, I won't say which part, 
But uh, I will say this. There are a lot of kids watching, I'm sure. My, my grandson um, went out, and Santa knew him by name. And he turned to my daughter and said, Mom, this is the real one. <laughs> because he knows my name. So this is the real one. So quite an impression. And I believe I heard rumor that one alderman also got her name called out by Santa. So she's either naughty or nice. I'm not sure. But Santa knew one of our aldermen by name also, the neighbor, some neighbors told me. So um, it's really a cool program. So thank you very much for that, Todd, and for the Levenhagens uh, for all that fuel. Um, under new business, any other unfinished business? Um, I have a couple of things under new business, but uh, first under new business, discuss the January 2nd, 2019 council <laughs> meeting. Committee meetings the week of December 24th. Uh, the department heads have also always uh, also already recommended that those committee meetings would be canceled due to the Christmas holiday and lack of business. So because there will probably will be no unless something comes up between now and then uh, there will not be reason to have a January 2nd council meeting so unless something comes up okay we do have one issue that we're dealing with that may we may have to may or may not have to try and get this group together but it may be able to wait till the mid January meeting okay and uh, we may have to, we may do something before that meeting. We'll let you know. We'll keep you apprised. Is that okay with everyone? Not having to meet? Okay. Uh, item number B, uh, Mayor Coffert's appointment to fill the expired terms of Denise Bur Burkett and Louis Zielsdorf on the Board of Appeals. Those terms will expire January 2022. Those will be considered at the January uh, 16th or 17th meeting, not the January 2nd. Um, and then I also have a couple other ones that I'm trying to get in touch with the people that hopefully they'll be ready for that meeting too. Um, anything else from anyone else? I do have a couple things that I just will quickly want to go over. Otherwise, but I'll take anyone else's first. Uh, I do want to say that uh, if you haven't... Uh, uh, come northbound on Highway 41 yet uh, and seeing the new Nina sign. It is awesome cool. Uh, that someone told me that. It's awesome cool. And uh, it really looks impressive. There's a lot of people commenting on it. It came out better than I even hoped for. You know, this was put in the budget a couple of years ago, kind of just a thought to have something to identify that you're coming in the Nina. Uh, Director Hayes stepped up and really did a nice job of working with one of the sign companies to put it on the wall there. So as you drive northbound on 41, we're still trying to figure out something for southbound. Uh, at the time, I put $100,000 in the budget based upon what other communities had spent, and we got it done for less than $25,000. So kudos to uh, Director Hayes uh, for his efforts. And if you haven't seen it yet, I would encourage you to take a drive down to uh, Oshkosh and turn around at 96 <laughs> and come northbound on 41. Because uh, it is pretty cool. I, I just think it's pretty cool. I think the lights are on it now, is what I'm being told, or they may be. The lights were on it today when I drove by, but it wasn't dark enough for the lights to physically be on, so I think they're operational, but yes. I would... Do not stop in Oshkosh. Right. Come back. Yeah, I was going to say, is not, the mayor actively asking there, people to don't. leave the city? <laughs> <laughs> and don't try to yeah, turn Bruce around. Bruce, Bruce Levenhagen will give you free gas to go yeah. down <laughs> south and come back. I don't know. But, but it, it is really cool, and it's something to be proud of, and it turned out really nice. And uh, it's just another one of those great things, and a lot of people are already commenting. So very cool. I'm excited about it. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, future Nina for putting on a, a, a very Merry Christmas, downtown Nina. Um, Alderman Erickson stated there was a lot of other players, the Historical Society, the Library, the Arts Council, but Future Nina had a big role in it, um, and Nina Police Department, and 
James Merton and traffic control, and everyone did a great job of putting on a great event. It was cold that night, uh, so I think uh, people came, they saw, and they went home uh, because uh, it was pretty darn cold. Uh, but uh, they had a good crowd anyways, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So that went off really great. Um, property taxes, um, Mike Easker uh, has uh, the property taxes are out. Bills are out. People are coming to City Hall paying them. You can also pay at any associated bank, Nicolay Bank or BMO Harris Bank. And um, if you have escrows and you have some money coming, uh, they're able to give you that back up to a certain dollar. And so I encourage people, if they want to pay it before the end of the year, you can come to City Hall. There's cookies and, uh, and uh, cider and coffee. Um, and we've been getting a steady stream of people into the office. So thanks to, the, uh, to them to do that. Pet licenses. I've mentioned I was going to say something about pets. Pet licenses are also up for renewal. Uh, so they're accepting the renewals for 2019. And also fire pit licenses are now available for 2019. Uh, nomination papers, if anyone wants to run for uh, city council or school board, nomination papers are you can take out till January 2nd. They have to be in filled out by January 2nd. Um, we have one person not running for re-election, Alderman Hillstrom. Uh, so that district is open. Uh, yesterday we had a luncheon for the election workers, just to let folks know, um, and we said thank you to them, Nina and Menasha. We do a joint luncheon with um, uh, the, with Menasha, and uh, they was really appreciated. And I just wanted to, you know, say that once again publicly on camera that uh, we're all really proud of our election, the way that we run elections here in this community. Uh, Clerk Sturm and Deputy Clerk Gufford. Uh, are very you know diligent about how these elections are run. The people that work for us uh, at the election at the polls those are long days, 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. at night, and uh, they really do a good job and they really take pride in doing a a good job and making democracy work. So we had them for lunch at Waverly, and I want to publicly thank them. Uh, Mayor Mercus and I did a proclamation, so that was kind of cool too. So um, lastly, a couple. Of Quick things, um, 2018 has been great for the city of Nina. I can only look forward to 2019. I think this council has done an amazing job uh, with things like the budget, with policies, with really moving Nina forward. And I think 2019 is going to be another good year. But me personally, uh, I believe, and, and people have different opinions on this, many of them are political, and I not doing the political stuff anymore. I'm doing the stuff that wants to put Nina on the map, wants to make Nina a great place to live, to work, to play. And I truly believe that we got an early Christmas gift with Kimberly Clark deciding to stay here in Nina uh, in the area. Unfortunately, the non-woven facility within our borders probably <clears throat> isn't going to survive. But 400 families are going to have a much better Christmas this year. Unfortunately, Conway, Arkansas um, is going to be closed, but uh, the people at Nonwovens are going to get the opportunity to go to the other facility. $222 million of new investment at that facility, 50 new jobs, and 243 suppliers, the supply chain that supplies that facility. Many of them, Nina businesses. Um, are, are, are smiling a little bit better today. So we, we've had some close calls with Theta Clark. We've had Kimberly Clark. <clears throat> I, for one, am just glad that, uh, that this worked out. And I believe uh, with the investment Kimberly Clark is making of $220 million, uh, they have cemented themselves for the future in this area. And to me, that's a plus. So I appreciate the uh, giving me a minute on that. And the last thing I will just say, the return on investment uh, is a big positive in my mind. So, um, and then lastly, um, I just want to, uh, from, from myself, say that uh, I hope you have uh, a very safe holiday. I want people who are out there listening, be careful. This is a high time for fires with Christmas trees and that, and the fire department wanted me to 
at least re remind people uh, the, the fireplaces and the, the trees and make sure you're watering them because they're very concerned this time of year about house fires and we want everyone to stay safe in our community. I want to wish each and every one of you a very blessed Christmas. Spend time with your family and friends and really what, uh, what Christmas is about and, and take it all in with grandkids and everything. Enjoy the holidays, safe travels, and uh, wherever you may go. And to the citizens out there of Nina, we thank you for being um, great residents. We believe this council is great stewards of the taxpayer funds and takes their responsibility very seriously. And uh, we just want to make Nina a great place to, to be. So with that, Merry Christmas. I know Jim wants to have make one announcement, uh, unless someone else wants to add on. Oh, Jim? Just a real quick update on my situation. I'll be doing the surgery on the 28th, and I'll be out for the first uh, two weeks in January. But uh, Adam is the city attorney of available should anything come up and uh, I will be uh, in contact from from home as well okay so anyone else Merry Christmas move to adjourn <laughs> there's a motion to uh, adjourn all in favor sit by saying aye aye opposed no we are adjourned Broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council Meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin, Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council Meetings, City Committee Meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents via the City website, www.ninagov.org. Nina residents can express their opinions about city issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website, www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback.